I'm Carol and it's time for fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration and we've got it all today. Now after last time, did you go and clean out your wardrobe? Are you still thinking about it? Hmm. Well I made an amazing discovery. I colour coded my wardrobe and I found I had eight black jackets and worse than that I had 19 pairs of black pants. Some had stripes, some were fancy, some were casual, but 19 black pants. Incredible. Now today we've got Energy for Life, where we meet anti-aging and longevity specialist, Dr. Michael Elstein, our regular fitness segment, and then we meet the Queen of Colour, Angela Bryant, who is going to show us at 84 how to make the most of life. Energy for life. Today we're going to be talking about the immune system and we're very privileged to have with us Dr. Michael Elstein from the Eternal Health Medical Center. Michael is a fellow of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine and the Australian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Michael's passions are wellness, longevity and the environment. He's written numerous books, including You Have the Power and Eternal Health. His latest book, released last year, The Immune Apocalypse. Hi, Michael. Fantastic to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be on your show, Carol. It's a big honor and it's a great time to be on your show as well. Yes, very opportune. Now, last year you wrote the book, you launched the book, The Immune Apocalypse, and that's where you discussed that our immune system is the key to our survival. And as we age, our immune systems naturally get weaker. And so for everyone over 50, everybody watching this show, it's now more important than ever to know about this vital information in your book, the important information in your book. So, Michael, can you please share with us your overview of our current situation and why it's so important for us to strengthen our immune system? As you know, we've never experienced this before. We are under threat from an extremely virulent, contagious virus for which there's no treatment, no cure, no vaccine. Doctors aren't going to save our bacon. We can't go to doctors and say, fix me because they haven't got anything to fix us with, really. So we have to fix ourselves. We have to be prepared for this virus. And the only way we can combat this virus is with our own immune systems. We have to look after our immune systems. This is our only defense. But sadly, as we get older, as you've indicated, our immune systems get weaker. And that's why, tragically, so many older people are succumbing to the coronavirus, but that doesn't have to happen. We can have really strong immune systems to beat this virus. And there are a number of ways which I've set out in Immune Apocalypse, by which we can take on this virus, challenge it, and hopefully beat it. So what does happen to our immune system as we get older? We make less immune cells. So we make less of the cells which can fight this virus and those meager cells that we do make are weaker. That's just what happens. It's a fact of aging. As we age, our bodies weaken, become more feeble, and our immune systems weaken along with that. But we don't have to accept that. So we can do things to make our immune systems as strong as possible so we can fight this virus. Now, one of the key ways is with diet. Sadly, our Western diet which is full of meat, we eat a lot of meat, we eat a lot of sugar, and we consume a lot of alcohol. The kind of things that we have at our standard Aussie Barbie. Now these kind of Aussie Barbie foods, sadly are not good for our immune system. And we need to move more towards a plant-based diet. That means eating more fruit and vegetables, because fruit and vegetables are very good for our immune system specifically our gut. Inside our gut, we have a healthy 
balance of germs. And that balance of germs goes a long way to making our immune system strong. And we make that balance of germs better by eating more fruits and vegetables. Which ones would we eat, for example? Garlic. Now, people don't want to have too much garlic. It gives off a funny odor. But we are living in times where we aren't that intimate anymore. We walk around wearing masks. We have this ridiculous elbow to elbow, no handshaking, no hugging. Garlic is very good for the immune system. It's a very powerful immune booster. It's a very powerful booster of the natural balance of germs in our gut. And there are a bunch of other vegetables which are also very good for the immune system. For example, kale, carrots, onions. So all you have to do is make a stir fry, cut up your garlic into your stir fry, in go your carrots, in go your kale, in go your onions. Fabulous, a beautiful meal in five minutes, which is immune boosting. I have that all the time. Now, apart from the nutrition, what else can we be doing to strengthen our immune system? We can balance our hormones. So our hormones are very, very important for our immune system. For example, when we sleep, we get a good night's sleep, we make a hormone called melatonin. And melatonin, which is generated when we sleep, is very good for our immune systems. So the earlier we go to sleep, the less we watch television at night, the less we are on our computers, the less we have blue light coming in, onto our, in through our eyes onto our brains, the less we're exposed to that, the more sleep we get, the, better, the more melatonin we make and the better shape our immune systems will be in. Women live longer than do men. Women are much more powerful than men. And men are actually succumbing more to the virus than women are. And that's because men have the hormone testosterone and women have the hormone estrogen. And estrogen is a much more powerful immune booster than testosterone. That's why women are much more powerful than men. We talk about Mother Earth and Mother Nature, Mother, because Mother and estrogen are very good for the immune systems. So testosterone, not so good. Estrogen, very good. Now, as women get older, they make less estrogen. So they might have to look at how can they improve their estrogen levels? What can they do to boost their estrogen status? Now, when we talk about hormones, you can have your hormones measured. There's another hormone called thyroid hormone, also very good for the immune system. So in fact, you can go to your doctor and say, doc, I want to know how strong my immune system is. What shape is my immune system in? And doctors can actually do tests. They can actually test your immune cells to see if you're making immune, enough immune cells, they can test your hormones. Are you making enough estrogen? Are you making enough uh, uh, melatonin to, to boost your immune system? Are you making too much testosterone? Another very important thing for the immune system is vitamin D. Vitamin D we get from sunlight. So you need to get out there and get enough vitamin D from sun. Get outdoors. With the lockdown in Melbourne, are you allowed to go outdoors and get vitamin D now or do you just have to stay indoors? You can't go out. As from this week, we can go out for two hours a day. So for those two hours, make sure you're getting enough sun. Now you have to expose the top half of your body into the sun. You only need about 20 minutes of sun between the hours of 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock to get enough vitamin D, but you need to do that two or three times a week. So for those two hours that you're allowed out, each day, did you say? Each, each day. Okay. You need to expose. If you can, the top half of your body, only 20 minutes, get enough vitamin D, which is very powerful immune boosting. I don't know other natural things. Exercise is good for the immune system. Meditation. So when you go out there, you can take your little bike, pedal your bike, get some exercise, get your vitamin D. And while you're pedaling on your bike, do meditation somehow. Meditate, <laughs> exercise, get vitamin D. Your immune system, your immune system will love you for it. So that sort of sums it up. So we're going to meditate on our bicycles in the sunshine and we're going to go and get our, all our hormones tested, our immune system tested. We're going to eat lots of plant-based foods. And that's about... And, yes, well done. <laughs> and sleep. And sleep. sleep. We've got to have good quality sleep. Get that melatonin up there. Well said, Carol. You've summarised everything I've said. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing with us all that valuable information. So, so important for everybody to, to do exactly what you're saying, to keep strong, to keep their immune systems nice and boosted up.
much for having me, Carol. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I hope you found that useful. We were so very, very lucky to have Dr. Elstein on the show today, sharing all his massive amounts of expertise. If you'd like to know more about longevity medicine, anti-aging medicine, environmental medicine, just jump on our website or drop us a note through Facebook. And if you're interested in any of those books, you have the power. Just jump on the website. You're getting hotter. Two 
Everyday Legends. This is where we focus on an inspiring person in the community. And today we're going to meet the very colourful Angel O'Brien. Angel's also known as the Queen of Colour, as at the age of 84, she still works as a colour response analyst. Angel has over 40 years experience in fashion, interior design and working with colour response technology. She's written about how colours can help sleep, health and communication. And she also has a book which addresses how colour can support dementia and Alzheimer's. Well, today we're going to find out what motivates Angel to keep going with so much energy into her 80s. Hi Angel and welcome to Over 50 So What? So oh, exciting and lovely to be with you. Our show is all about the fact that age is just a number and you're a living an example of age is just a number. Well, all the viewers, they know a bit about your background already, so they really want to know how do you keep yourself motivated, you know, going into your 80s? Because I work seven days a week, 14 hours a day in helping human beings on this planet. And I am so blessed that I was born dyslexic. I kept, couldn't add up, I couldn't spell, and I couldn't use any machinery. So I had to find a way of uh, using something that I was good at. And I became involved with the science of color and how the electromagnetic energy of color works. I work with designers and they didn't know about it. And I went to a conference in Buenos Aires and met all these scientists and they said, every single minute you are being affected by color physically, mentally, emotionally, every second of your life, whether you're awake or asleep. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that sounds wonderful. I can support hospitals, jails, childcare centres, aged care facilities, people's homes, and buses and trains and, 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 and colours that are going to make the difference between living a best life and an ordinary life. Oh, that's a fabulous answer because obviously you're so passionate about what you're doing. You're helping so many people. It just keeps you going to help more and more people. <laughs> and of course, I'm in a choir as well. I've been singing since I was 15 and that vibrates really well for the energy. Everything on this planet vibrates. So you're singing, you're snow skiing and you play tennis. Yes. And, and I'm on the best beach in the world. And of course, what you wear can make a huge difference. Like, for instance, wearing red undies. Uh, the red undies that you wear go through your base chakra and they travel all the way around your body and stimulate your brain and also your body. So I never wear anything else but red undies. I can give you colours for every single colour uh, underwear to do a certain thing. I think we'll leave that for another time. <laughs> I sleep in pale blue sheets so it keeps you young as well. So we're well, talking about keeping yourself young. So you exercise every day or five days a week or what's your exercise routine? Every day on the beach. Every day on the beach and, and the tennis and the snow skiing and the, then the singing. And is there anything new that you started doing after you turned 50? Yes, I, I started working with um, the electromagnetic energy, the, the, the feng shui of more to do with the, 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 the colours that you have around you as well as energize your body. So, and of course, in my new book that I've written on the Alzheimer's and dementia, which should I have said for the whole world, um, because what you eat can make a difference, the color of the food that you eat. So you only got into the science of color, um, this, 
in your 50s so that was only in the last well that's 30 years ago isn't it long time ago <laughs> yes we can see that you're passionate about color every single color you wear sends a message now the colors that i wear this aqua is the color to wear for most people and especially as you get more mature because this says to people before you open your mouth the color says i'm cool calm and collected so now what you're wearing the red it says i'm sexually aware it doesn't mean it's <laughs> True, but red is the highest vibrational energy in all the colors and white says i'm pure so you're recommending to people they need to get into this colors because it's going to transform their lives what they wear what they eat what they eat what they sleep in of course especially their undies but what <laughs> they wear but also uh, the color that you choose to drive in so using color in every aspect of your life can make a huge difference to making your life easier and younger Tell us, um, what, what have you still got on your bucket list? You've written a few books, are you going to write more books? What else are you going to do before you hit 102? I'm writing another book for everybody in the, uh, in the world to take on board the colours to use to keep healthy and young and support for them. And the other thing that I'm going to be doing is writing a book on the men in my life and the life in my men. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be a very big book? <laughs> little darling but lots of words sweetheart <laughs> so you're going to keep running workshops writing more books snow skiing playing tennis running on the beach what till you're 102 even longer i hope i hope well i'm looking forward to that next book <laughs> that's right i've got a, i've got a man that's following me at the moment that we fell in love when i was 18 and he wants to come to sydney to um take me out for dinner <laughs> reignite the flame <laughs> Yes, it's, it's already going. <laughs> uh, it's very exciting. It gives a lot of people a lot of hope that are single, you know, when they're <laughs> a bit older. <laughs> well, thanks for making us all laugh today, you know, especially all of us in Victoria, since this show goes out predominantly to Victoria and South Australia. My pleasure, and it's lovely to talk to everybody. And may I wish everybody a colourful day. If you haven't hit 84 yet, what are you going to be doing when you get there? there well angel certainly showed us today that life is too short to be serious thanks for joining and watching the show today we hope you join us on facebook and if you're not on facebook then just send us an email or take a jump on our website if you want more fitness videos there's plenty on youtube over 50 so what and if you miss the TV show, the replays are also available on YouTube. We hope to see you again soon. I'm Carol, over 50. So what? watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and we'll send you the latest TV episodes and videos. Like our Facebook page and please send us your comments, your stories and any inspiring people that you know. Over 50, so what?